Hello and welcome to Lucy's Corset Collection 2015. So I'm going to be walking you through about 55 corsets in this year's collection. I do have 63, but some of them don't actually belong to me, so I'm not actually going to be showing them. Um, but yes, these are the ones that I'm going to be showing you. About 15 of them I have not reviewed yet, and uh, a couple of them you've never even seen on this channel before. So this will be a surprise to some of you. So starting with the budget off the wrap corsets, these are the five that I own from Orchard Corset. The one that I wear the most often by far is the mesh uh, CS411 cincher in the very middle there. Uh, it's just the most comfortable and the most practical for me. On the left here, you can see the original uh, CS426 in the beige cotton. And then down here is the CS426 with the hip ties, which I still need to review. And the cool thing about this one is uh, many of you who've been following me for a few years know that I initially made a tutorial on how to make uh, hip ties in your original 426 corset. And they thought it, thought it was such a good idea that they decided to take the design and put it into production. And so they've given me proper credit by putting my label inside, which is very exciting for me. So I'm very happy that they offered to give me credit for my design and, and you know, uh, attach my name to it. So that's very exciting. And on the right here, you can see the short versions of the CS426 corsets. So here is the original and again with the side hip ties. So I'm going to be reviewing those this summer as well. And here are some other off the rack corsets that are not made by Orchard Corset. So on the top left here, this is the cherry print underbust made by Paper Cats from Poland. Uh, that one I still need to review. The one on the top right is by Corset Connection, that's the Flora underbust that I most recently reviewed. And the bottom two here are both standard length underbust corsets made by Timeless Trends. This one is an old stock corset from I think about 2011. This one is a newer stock corset that they released last year. This is a dyeable corset that I bought uh, to um, compare the measurements between the old stock and the new stock corsets and also to make a tutorial, which obviously I have not still done, on how to dye your corsets if you wanted to. So uh, I still need to decide what color I want to make this because I'm really interested in learning how to uh, tea dye things, like tea stain, uh, but I also want it to be a really vibrant and bright color. So um, I'm also interested in dip dyeing. So obviously I, I should have purchased more than one. <laughs> And here are the two black satin corsets that I own from Isabella Corsetry from California. So these are both ready to wear. This one is the uh, Josephine, the original Josephine in size 20. And on the right is the more recent Petite Josephine in size 22. And I believe this is now the oldest corset that I own. I purchased this back in 2010. So this is my Sparkle Run collection, and here is the Sparkle Run cincher that you've probably seen in a million of my episodes. Uh, I still can't believe how close it fits my measurements, even being a standard size sample. Uh, this was another sample. It's a long line under bust. Uh, you can see that it cuts straight across. I did review this one last year. I didn't fit into it, so I modeled it on my, um, my mannequin. And so I'll put the reviews in a link Here's a corset that I did not review yet, but uh, I had some photos taken by Inaglow Photography when I was in England last summer, and I also wore this overbust with a sari to um, the Grand Corset Ball this past March uh, in New York City. So that is my recent Sparkle Ragon corset. And over here on the far right is my red sort of butterfly top. It's a deep plunge overbust corset. And I believe this was the very first overbust that I, uh, or the first custom overbust that I commissioned a corseteer uh, back in, uh, I think late 2011 or early 2012, somewhere around there. Yeah, so this is still one of my favorites. And here's a collection of other corsets I have from makers in the UK. So at the center top right here, this is by What Katie Did, so it's a ready to wear. Uh, you can call it off the rack, but it is a little bit higher quality than your typical off the rack corsets. And this was uh, the Floral Antoinette, which I believe is no longer available unless you special order it. Uh, beside that is a gold Morgana Femme Couture, and that is actually the exact same dimensions, uh, the same style as my MF1331, which was in a, a sort of teal color with black boning channels, but I traded that one 
for this one, which is gold with uh, a black lace overlay, uh, I got that from Jasmine of uh, Sin and Satin, so we decided to trade corsets. <laughs> Below that one in the red here, this is the Carmen Underbust made by Ava Corsetry, and this was a standard size ready to wear I bought uh, during one of her sample sales. And in the center bottom here, this is a black mesh underbust with a turquoise and teal silk. The silk actually came from Christine Wickham, who was uh, my friend who passed away last year. And this corset was made by JL Corsets in Wales. And uh, this corset was actually put on sale uh, the all the proceeds went to charity uh, so this corset was made in memory of Christine so of course I had to to be the winning bidder and, and, and pick that up and one of Christine's favorite corsets was actually also made by JL Corsets it was also a mesh kind of like this so it's uh, it's something sort of to remember her by and these two underbust corsets are made by the CNS corsets, uh, Stuart and Constantine. Uh, so these are quite old. I purchased them from one of their uh, previous models. So they have seen better days, but they are still absolutely gorgeous. This one is a sort of hologram, like a rainbow hologram sort of material. And this one is a uh, the really deep purple with black lace overlays. So these two corsets, as well as the JL corsets and the uh, lace overlay um, Morgana Femme Couture, I still need to review. And here are the corsets that I own from other corset makers in Europe. So all the corsets on the top row I've already reviewed. From the left, the red one with the gold coins is made by Serindi. It was part of her um, Oriental Princess collection. The one in the center is made by Sina Couture in Russia. And the one on the right, the semi-mesh underbus, is made by Contessa Gothique in Croatia. On the bottom here, these are the corsets that I still need to review. So on the bottom left here, this one is made by Maison Mongineau. The one in the center here, the plain black one, is made by uh, Bizarre Design in the Netherlands. And the one on the right, the gorgeous one in purple and gold, is made by Vide Noir Couture, which is uh, based in Italy. And these are corsets made by corseteers based in California. So the one at the very top, the Marvel one, is made by Castle Corsetry. The green one on the right side, that is a plunge demi bust, long line, um, and that is made by MDC Designs. I think he has very recently switched his name over to Mitchell Dane. The one at the very bottom here, many of you are probably already familiar with, that is the PY09 long line underbust made by Puymon, based in Hollywood. And here at the very left side, this is my gold Aziza overbust with straps, and this is the newest addition to my collection. This is made by Dark Garden in San Francisco. These three corsets were made by corseteers based on the west coast of the US. So I have a lot of corsets made by uh, American corseteers now, and I was like, how am I going to divvy them up and organize them and present them in a way that makes sense? And I figured I would just go west coast, middle, east coast, <laughs> because uh, that was the easiest thing that I could come up with. So this one here, is the, my Mimosa Overbust made by Versatile Corsets, and Versatile Corsets is based in um, Oregon. I believe their corset maker is based in California, though. Uh, the purple one at the top there is made by um, Tighter Corsets, who is based in Duval, Washington, and that is, I believe, the Ref R pattern by Atelier Sylph, based in France. Um, but it was originally, you know, a, an antique pattern, a demi bust, and it was cut down to uh, fit like an underbust on me. And over here is a long line underbust with this uh, sort of silver gray silk and it also has a hand stitched uh, heavy black lace in the front there and this is made by uh, Ryan LaRue based in Washington as well. And these four corsets were made by corset makers who are somewhat in the middle of America. <laughs> Uh, so this is my Electra Designs pink overbust, and Electra Designs is based in Texas. Sugar Kitty Corsets, this is my extremely curvy one that apparently caused a lot of hubbub because of the silhouette. Uh, it's Sugar Kitty, I believe, is based in Ohio, but she's not making corsets anymore. She's sort of retired from corsets, and she's focusing more on making accessories like pasties and whatnot now. Although I do hope that one day she does return to corsetry because she is very talented. Uh, this is my newer Helen underbust made by Ties That Bind who I, be, I believe is based in Michigan. And over here on the right, this sort of robin's egg blue corset I had reviewed pretty recently, and this is made by K&K Designs, which is based in Minnesota. 
And moving eastward, this one on the left, many of you will probably recognize as being my contour corset, which is my favorite training corset. Over here, the purple ribbon corset is made by Sin and Satin, and uh, it's it's not showing its true curve right now just because it's been in storage for a little while, but it is absolutely lightweight and beautiful and gorgeous. And the one at the bottom right here is made by Bespoke Corsets, who is based in Florida, the last I heard. Unfortunately, I have not heard from Jill in quite a while now, so I'm not sure um, if she's still making corsets or not, but this one I'm very lucky to have, uh, I guess, gotten in time while she was still making corsets. And these are the corsets that I own from Canadian Corseteers. So over here is my plain black underbust made by Sweet Carousel Corsetry based in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, the top right there with the pink and black, that is made by uh, L'Atelier de la Fleur based in uh, Toronto. And the two at the bottom here are both made by Retrofolie. This long line one is the Azalea, and obviously I chose the um, the birth of Venus on there. And this one on the bottom right is the Alyssum cut, and I chose the La Scarpelette or the swing for the uh, the painting on it. And here are just a couple of homemade corsets that I still own for one reason or another. Uh, at the top here is my Sebastian underbust with my Little Mermaid lining, which is still one of my favorites. Uh, over here is the pattern matched or the motif matched overbust that I made uh, to experiment with Scarlett Sapsford's uh, Express Corset Making course. So that this is what I made using her construction techniques and I think it turned out quite well. So this is probably the most recent corset that I have completed. I am actually making two more corsets as we speak but I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. Over here I think is the second or third corset that I've ever completed. This was way back in 2010 actually and this was the uh, faux ribbon style corset that I made to go with my Tamina costume from my uh, Prince of Persia cosplay that I wore for Halloween back in 2010. And this one I actually made for Penny Underbust, uh, the model. Uh, really far back, I believe like something like 2011 or 2012, which she sent back to me for alteration. And um, yeah, so that one doesn't actually belong to me, but it is uh, currently in my hands. And it's interesting, you know, looking back and seeing what I would do differently these days. You know, it, I've, I've certainly come a long way. And of course, here are my two corsets made by Madame Cher from Brazil. So the one on the left is my mesh uh, ribbon style cincher, which I wear extremely often in the summertime. It's probably uh, one of my most frequently worn corsets in the, in the summertime, actually. And on the right is my cupped floral overbust, which I still need to review. Unfortunately, the cups are a little bit small for me, so uh, I would like to lose a little bit of weight before I review that one, actually. But yeah, the, the construction is beautiful. It's just that the, uh, the top part just doesn't fit me the way that it's supposed to. And these are the corsets I own that are very rare because the corset tiaras are no longer active. So this one at the top left is a bridal overbust that was designed by Velda Lauder who passed away a number of years ago. And the other three here were made by Creation La Scarpelette who uh, I guess sort of disappeared a, a number of years ago because she was extremely um, popular. Her designs, like everybody wanted one of her corsets and I believe she got overworked and sort of um, yeah, fell off the face of the earth. So um, these are the corsets that I will pretty much never give up or never sell because they are so rare and they may indeed become uh, collector's items one day. So for the few of you who have actually made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. This concludes the end of the 2015 corset collection. And if you have your own corset collection, it doesn't matter if you have two corsets or 20, I would love to see what you have, especially if you own corsets from uh, corseteers that I haven't tried yet. So feel free to post a video and link me to it. And I will see you all next week for another video. Bye.